Hey everyone, Sparrow here, and welcome to another episode of Sandstone Eco Zoo, our new zoo in the grasslands of Australia. Last time we built the zoo entrance and a habitat for the little penguins, but today we are adding the adorable quokkas. This building I'm putting up is going to eventually be a gift shop, but for now it's a placeholder and only the left wing will be filled out with some quokka backstage area items. Keeping it similar in style to the entrance for now, but may change it up at a later date. We'll see when inspiration strikes. I have to say, so far I've been loving all of the new Oceania DLC items and I'm very excited to be using more of them in this build. I feel like my YouTube feed is flooded with Oceania only builds. How are you all finding it? Drop me a comment and let me know. Are you sick of island style buildings yet? This one is definitely more modern in style and I think I might put some skylights in when I come back to do the gift shop interior. I just really love natural light and the way it filters in and especially in a place like Australia where there is a lot of hot sun, it seems like a waste not to use it. Plus this is also an eco zoo so part of that is cutting down on the amount of power we use to light everything. I'm imagining a lot of these lights to be run off of the power generated by the wind turbines and solar panels that will eventually be all around the zoo, but I have also included some tiny solar lights in the planters all over the zoo, which just absorb sunlight throughout the day and light it up at night. So here, we are building one of the said planters around a photo backdrop. Someone linked to this prop on the workshop in a Discord server I'm in, and I immediately thought of the quokka, because there are so many photos of tourists taking selfies with quokkas. But while it's cute and their smiles are adorable, they are still wild animals, and I don't know if I agree with the idea of quokka selfies. So SEZ's solution is a photo station where you can have a photo taken against a green screen, and the famous smiling quokka is photoshopped in it, so that you can still get your cute photo, but without coming too close to the animals. Because we do also care about animal conservation, and we don't want to stress our animals out. Guests will however also have the opportunity to use the viewing dome in this habitat, so if they really wanted to and the quokka is right next to the viewing dome, they could potentially still get a selfie with it. Lots of options. For fencing, I borrowed the ones I built for the penguin backstage and recolored to a more deserty vibe. I meant to keep them quite short, but apparently the quokka can jump up to one and a half meters, so these are somewhere between there and two meters tall to make sure they can't escape. We'll also be making a hot wire that runs along the top with a hinge piece and the light cable, both recolored to black to make it seem like there's an extra measure to keep the quokkas from jumping over the fence. The viewing portions will have this glass panel, while others have the stained Indonesian timber to screen off certain parts of the habitat. And these will go all the way around, but in a much more organic shape than the penguin habitat, which feels very rectangular. So this habitat will be much more rounded, create some juxtaposition, keep it feeling natural. I did use the circle trick here when I measured out the diameter with two pieces and then carefully rotated them so they were touching the previous panel. It wasn't perfect, but that's okay because we don't need the whole circle and we can fix up the last two panels that aren't quite fitting in. This just felt like a much easier way to get the shape I wanted rather than freehanding each piece of fence all the way around. It's kind of like drawing, you check to see which simple shapes fit first like circles, triangles, rectangles, and then add the curves and details in between. Here are those timber pieces I was talking about, just making sure the quokkas have a bit of privacy in some areas so it's not just glass all the way around. And here they are, our cute little quokkas! We have a male and a female and their names are Sunny and Joy for the smiles they are always wearing on their faces. Since the quokkas are in, it's time to figure out how large of a door they need to get between the interior and exterior areas. And oh my gosh, their hitboxes are huge for such a tiny animal. I was almost ready to quit while doing this. It felt like I kept moving the posts, but the traversable area never changed. Did finally get it, but it made me seriously contemplate installing the mod that makes hitboxes a more believable size. Once that was figured out, I wanted to dress up the outside of this door with some of the Polynesian pieces, including a thatch awning, some driftwood to hold it up, and the netting pieces on the sides. The netting seemed a little flimsy though, so I also remembered that we have these awesome bark pieces in-game, and I used those on the outside to make it feel a little more sturdy.
The backstage area will have three kennels, I guess you can call them, with keeper access. Thankfully, with the doors measured out already, it was just a matter of sliding that opening over and filling out the mesh all around it. Tried to make these fences more realistic with the double metal, so we have the lighter small metal beam on the outside and the darker marquee beam on the inside as a way to secure the mesh to the frame. Also some hinge pieces acting as nails or screws for that added detail. Tried something new with the door handles here and used the conservation pipe brackets. Not sure if I'm in love with it, but the plastic allows for super bright colors, which is something we're going to try doing more of in SEZ. I think bright colors will not only look nice and break up the monotony of the horizontal wood and dark details everywhere, but they also tie back to the indigenous cultures of Oceania, who frequently use bright colors in their art. Creating some additional details near the doors, a plaster base with a gutter piece sunk into the ground to give the illusion of a spot for the gates to latch into. And then, even though I love this small gate, I had to swap over to a regular gate to make sure the keepers had access to the food and water in the habitat. So we'll put that door in the wall here and create a fake gate to go between the fence panels. There will be a little kitchen here similar to the penguin backstage, nothing too fancy, so the keepers have somewhere to prep food for our quokkas. How cool would it be if Frontier gave us food prep counters for the keepers similar to what we have for the guest amenities? It would make building backstage areas so much easier, no need to throw in the massive keeper huts but still have some of the details from them, like glove dispensers and sinks and such, so we don't have to build them from scratch. I think that's a million dollar idea. Some finishing touches on the inside to liven up the walls. This bark will also prevent the quokkas from scratching at the plaster and then some tools for our keepers, building a small rack that we can then use all around the zoo. I always like to have these elements built once and then copy them around to other backstages. We're going to get our viewing dome in next. There were very few places I could put it in this small habitat because it was obstructed by how close the barriers were to it. So it'll go right there almost in the center of our circular barrier and the viewing entrance will go inside of the gift shop right next to the door to the staff area. This entrance is also massive so I tried to get it as close to the wall as possible. It has to be on the habitat barrier so played around with that to make sure both the viewing entrance and the keeper's entrance were exactly where I wanted them. Then some more enrichment for the animals like the tunnel and the sprinkler to cool them off. The bubble machine, which also always gives me trouble, I can never seem to get it into a habitat because it's always obstructed for some reason. Which is really too bad because the animation of animals playing with bubbles is just the cutest thing ever, so I'm glad it worked for the cutest of animals. Hiding the ugly edges of the viewing dome with some more of the volcanic rock to match the planters on the edge of the habitat. We're also going to spruce up the outside of the building with some more of the bark pieces and the new oceanic detailing. I thought this decorative strip looked nice around the edges. The inside of the habitat is going to feature mostly grassland and temperate plants with a few tropical additions, but also added some rocks to break up the ground. Had to be careful that they were low enough so that the quokkas could still make use of as much of the habitat as possible. More rocks going in around the edge of the habitat to close the small gap at the bottom and add some interest. So speaking of interest, here are some interesting facts about the quokka while I plant up the habitat. Quokkas are macropods and specifically marsupials, which means they're related to kangaroos and wallabies. This means their babies also poke their heads out of their pouches. Quokkas may seem very tiny, but they're about the size of a domestic cat, which is still pretty small, but larger than I thought they were. They can, however, jump one and a half meters and they also climb. So you may see me putting some green palm skirts around the trees to make sure the quokkas don't climb the branches and hop out of their enclosure. Quokkas are also mainly nocturnal, so why are we building an outdoor habitat for them? Well, they've slowly started adapting to daylight because when people first discovered them, the quokkas found out that these people would feed them, and the people were around during the day, so quokkas started to be awake during the daytime hours so they could interact and get fed. So as a result, they are mostly comfortable in both day and night hours, which works out great for our guests. 
to finish up this area, I thought a quick pit stop would be fun to include. This round hut will feature an ice cream and water vendor, as well as an information kiosk so guests can stock up before they enter the rest of the zoo. Because each of these counters is on the grid, I had to separate them into their own groups to get them right where I wanted them. Also made the windows more difficult to put in, but we're going to do our best and just eyeball it. Some light colored counters like in the entrance buildings and also implied access for the vendors. For the roof, I finally got to play around with the new thatch roofs and I'm honestly both happy and not happy that they're off the grid. It took some fine tuning to make sure there were no gaps between the pieces and they made a nice solid cone. Overall, I do love the look of them, especially because the underside has beams on it already and I don't have to worry about making a custom roof interior. We are here at the entrance to Sandstone Eco Zoo. And as we head in through the main gate, we have our penguin on the left. And right over here is the quokka. So we have our quokka photo station. Hey, old Michum. Hello, sir. You can get a photo taken of yourself and then a quokka photoshopped into it. We do also have the little Oceania statues in the back here. One over there and one over there. I think that turned out pretty cute. And right as we round this corner, we see the quagga habitat. So, let's see if we can spot them. They were hopping around in here not that long ago. Hmm. A little bit of view into the interior. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's both of them. Looks like they're sleeping though. Not really moving around. There is also the viewing dome in there. And as we round the corner, there is one more entrance into the backstage over there. On the trees, you can see the little skirts I put on there so that they wouldn't climb. It's wild to me that they can both jump and climb. Like, talk about an escape artist animal. And then here I see there's no one to actually sell us ice cream or water. But... That's okay. We're gonna climb over the counter here. We do also have a freezer with drinks in it and then an ice cream freezer. These are just adapted from the ice cream um, stand that's all the way over there by the entrance. That's off of the workshop. If you want to grab that, there is a link in the description. And then this little thing here, I took from one of Shift C's gift shop packs and just kind of threw it into the center. Yeah, lots of clutter back here, because why not? Oh, no, that's not what we wanted. Let's try that again. Perfect. I see our little guys. Oh, one of them is moving. They're so cute. You gonna do something for us? No, come back. Anyway, I don't know which one that is. I don't know if that's the male or the female. But let's take a look at the interior. So here we are inside the left wing of that gift shop building. Here is the dome viewing area. This part is obviously unfinished still, but we do have a nice planter. And then we have the staff area for the quokka. So as soon as you walk in, you have a gate. That's where the quokkas would be. Um, and then we also have a little kitchen over here. So lots of fruits and veggies. This track lighting is by Leaf, I believe. That will also be in my collection of workshop items. And then in here, we have access into the kennels for the quokkas. And I see one of them followed us in here. I'm so happy those doors finally worked. <laughs> Took forever. So then through this door, we gain access into the habitat. It looks really nice from here. I haven't actually been in here yet, but Quokkas, you have a nice little home. And then of course over there is the viewing dome, which we will pop into right away here. Mm -hmm. 
Here we are inside of the viewing dome. Great view of the quokka going over there to play with the bubble machine. Or walking right past it, I guess. And as we turn around, oh, maybe let's not look at the keeper. Yeah. We do have this beautiful um, gum tree growing right over. And a great view of the entire inside of the habitat, which is quite nice. Here is an overview of where SEZ started today, and here are all of our new additions. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe. We are so close to a thousand subscribers on this channel. See you next time. Bye.